NFL free agency rolls on. College football expands, and we haven't even played the expansion yet. Men's basketball is nearing March Madness. NBA, NHL, one day closer to that most wonderful time of the year, which is the playoffs. All that next on your sports report. See you later. Welcome, everyone. This is your host, Captain Boring. This is your 10 Minute Sports Report. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Listen, I'm just going to be frank with you. It's going to be more than 10 minutes today. I got a bunch of free agent, NFL free agency stuff. I, I told you, college men, men's college basketball, either way really works, um, is in the postseason. So we're in the conference tournaments, and then March Madness takes place next Thursday, I I believe it starts. So we're in the heart of March Madness, basically. We're at the beginning stages of it, at least. And then I got NBA schedule. Got to get you caught up on that. I got the NHL schedule. Then I got to do the standings. So it's going to be much more as we're already at a minute and 40 seconds. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. All righty. We're going to start with the shortest story, the Power Five teams 10 fbf conferences and notre dame so all 10 fbf conferences are pushing to meet friday a friday deadline to agree to the next contract and inform the cfp they will participate participate in the playoff in 2026 and beyond expanding to 14 teams starting in 2026 multiple sources told espn thursday that each league and notre dame join a conference notre dame are expected to sign a legal agreement by midday friday starting in 2026 the new agreement will codify the further financial separation i'm gonna need help from you smart people on that sentence of the expanded big 10 and sec from everyone else in college athletics the group of five commissioners have been in a difficult position without any negotiating power but sources indicate they won't choose being excluded from the cfp it's like the godfather's offer you can't refute Fuse, one group of five athletic director told ESPN. He is absolutely right. It's going to 14 teams. Yes, you won't get as much money. Yes, the Big Ten and SEC will be treated differently and seen as the two big boys on campus as the favorite children and you will be treated like the ugly stepchild but it is what it is you still want to get all dolled up and go to the ball with the mice and the pumpkin but in order to do that you have to play by this ugly stepmother's rules so that was a great cinderella analogy and now we'll jump into some more Cinderella's. You know, I wasn't going to do it this way, but I'm just going to do it this way. All righty. So in men's college basketball, we are in the uh, conference tournament. So this is the stage before the NCAA tournament. We are loaded up with games galore. Uh, last night, num- unranked Cincinnati was playing Kansas and blew them out by 20, 72 to 52. Florida State beat Virginia Tech, and then today uh, Florida State lost to Virginia Tech. Yes, it has, happens that fast. Wake Forest beat Notre Dame 72 to 59. In probably one of the games of the day, I got to find it here because it was, here it is, Albany Christian, Stephen F. Austin tied at 57. Goes down. Albany Christian steals the ball. Eight seconds left. Goes down the court. Goes up for a game-winning layup. It is blocked. Five seconds left. Stephen F. Austin gets the rebound. Outlet. Outlet with one second left. 40-foot shot. Heave on the sideline. It is good for a 60-57 to win. That was a first round there. Um, We got 
lot. So Oklahoma um, and TCU played. TCU currently just getting routed by Houston, 57 to uh, 39. In earlier today action, number two, UConn beat Xavier, 87 to 60. Number four, UNC beat FSU, 92 to 67. Texas Tech beat Baylor, 81 to 67. Um, let's see here. Uh, um, Arizona beat USC somewhere. They beat them by somewhere by some amount of points. I don't know where that page just went. I was on it, and now oh, here we go. Number six, Arizona beat unranked USC 49-70. to Bronny James is plays for USC, and he is not having a very good season. So uh, I'll have more on this next week as I'll go over the champions. I kind of just went into this blind, and it shows immensely. All right, NFL free agency. Calvin Ridley, bet, wink, wink, because he was suspended for a year for betting, uh, on himself, signed a one-year deal last year with the Jags, actually got traded there, and then saw, and then uh, played, bet on himself. And then this offseason, he signed a four-year, $92 million with $50 million dollar million dollars guaranteed with the Titans because the Jaguars didn't resign Ridley. They owe Atlanta the 79th overall pick. It's just how it works out though. During the trade, it was like if Ridley resigns with the Jag, then the pick would have been higher. It would have been like in the fifties or 49, but because he didn't resign and he resigned with the Titans, it's lower. Odell Beckham Jr. Was released by the Ravens. The chargers who were over the salary cap by a lot, Release Mike Williams, saved $20 million against the salary cap, restructured Mac, uh, Khalil Mack, who is 33 years old, his contract, and they came in just under the $255 million salary cap. Today, Joey Bosa's contract was restructured. Keenan Allen, who is the other big three, it was Mike Williams, Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, or four, I should say, and... Um, Wow, Keenan Allen is due money tomorrow afternoon, so a decision coming on him later. So the Chargers also um, signed Hayden Hurst today, a tight end, and you know how Jim Harbaugh loves those tight ends. Joe, Mick Joe Mixon, excuse me, signs a deal with the Texans. The Eagles, who couldn't, who said they couldn't afford C.J. Gardner Johnson at twenty-four million dollars last year for three years, signed him this year to a three-year deal worth thirty-three million dollars. So more expensive there. The Eagles also give kicker Jake Elliott a four-year, twenty-four million dollar deal, which makes him tied for the highest-paid kicker of all time, along with Justin Tucker at six million dollars a year. The Steelers trade star wide out. Uh, Dante Johnson to the Panthers for Dante Jackson and a fourth round pick. The Panthers trade star pass rusher Brian Burns to the Giants for a second round pick and a fourth round pick and a 2025 fifth round pick. The Giants then subsequently turned around and gave Burns a five year 150 50 million dollar contract with 87 and a half million guaranteed. I should point out that the Rams in 2022 offered the Panthers two ones and one fourth round pick for Brian Burns, which the Panthers at the time turned down only to trade him for a second and a fourth. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Packers release Aaron Jones, who subsequently signed with the Minnesota Vikings for one year, $7 million. Then the Packers turn around and, good for my fantasy team, sign Josh Jacobs for, to a four year, $48 million. And then today, the Commanders trade quarterback Sam Howell, their starting quarterback currently, to the Seahawks for a third round in a fifth round pick, all but clearing up the way for them to draft a kicker at number two. Overall. All righty, NBA schedule. Let's go to Monday. Let's get you caught up and then let's do the standing. So, Phoenix visited Cleveland and got a big time dub in the land. Not many people have beat Cleveland at home this year. 117 to 111. Kevin Durant poured in 37 points in the win. Golden State visited. Uh, Victor Wimbenyama and got a 112 to 102 
victory behind 22 points from Jonathan Kaminga. Boston visited Portland and got a 121 to 99 victory, and Denver beat Toronto on their on Denver's home floor 125 to 119. Tuesday, Philadelphia New York played in Madison Square Garden, and much like Philadelphia, all Philadelphia's games, it went the way of whoever they were playing. 106 to 79 victors were the New York Knicks. Indiana visited Oklahoma City, the number one Oklahoma, the number one seed Oklahoma City Thunder out west. Wowzer, Bowser. 121 to 111. Indiana Pacers come out on top. The number one seed out, or the number two seed out west, excuse me, in the Minnesota Timberwolves visited the LA Clippers and they got a dub. 118 to 100 there on Wednesday. Denver went to Miami in again. Denver's just rolling right along 100 to 88. I think they're on a like seven or eight game winning streak. We'll see here in just a minute. Cleveland went to New Orleans and got a 116 to 1 to 95 victory, excuse me. Golden State visited Dallas. Dallas is um Dallas Mavericks player Luka Doncic had a streak of seven straight triple doubles going. It was snapped. However, his team got the victory 109 to 99 over the Warriors. Los Angeles Lakers went to Sacramento and it did not go well. 120 to 107. The Sacramento Kings behind 23 points from Harrison Barnes get that dub done tonight. It is Philadelphia visiting Milwaukee, Dallas visiting Oklahoma City, and Phoenix visiting Boston in some big-time matchups. The standings look as such. Boston continues to grow this league. They are on a three-game winning streak, 8-2 and two overall. The lead is now 9.5 games over the second seed Cleveland Cavaliers, 9.5 back. However, they are also tied with the Milwaukee Bucks at 9.5 back. At the four seed, New York Knicks, five seed, Orlando Magic, thir- uh, 13 and 13 and a half back. Sitting at 15 games back are the six seed, Philadelphia 76ers, and the seven seed, Indiana Pacers. Miami Heat are the six, are the eight seed, excuse me, 16 games back. Bulls are nine, and Atlanta Hawks are 10. Seven through 10 participate in a play and nine and 10 play each other. Loser goes home. Winner plays the loser of the seven, eight matchup for the eighth seed out West. The Denver Nuggets are now the new leader in the playhouse. They are nine and one in their last 10 games, four game winning streak, half game lead over the Oklahoma city thunder one game lead over the third place. Timberwolves Clippers sit four back Pelicans sit six and a half back Sacramento Coming off that big win from L.A., now up to the sixth seed, seven and a half back. Tied with the Suns, who are in seventh seed, also seven and a half back. Mavericks, eight back. Lakers, ten and a half. Warriors, eleven and a half back. Let's switch our attention over to skating on knives on frozen Water. The Blues on Monday visited Beantown in Boston. That's not Beantown, that's Chicago. I understand. And got a 5-1 to one dub. The New Jersey Devils, who... Uh, actually, fun fact here. I'm going to share this. I'm just going to take a break because at this point, who cares? Only two people watch my last video. Breaking news. Jaguars are signing former... Nose tackle, Eric Armstead, 49ers nose tackle, Eric Armstead to a three-year, $51 million deal. That's huge for that defense. Uh, My mom's fun fact about the New Jersey Devils are... The reason they're called the New Jersey Devils is because New Jersey had a has a mythical creature that is winged and small and supposedly came from the 13th child of a couple who practiced sorcery in the 1700s or something like that so not even she's current the name its name is the new jersey devil so fun fact for everyone thanks mom uh the devils visited the rangers and it went the way of the rangers three to one the winnipeg jets hosted washington and got a three to nothing w on tuesday colorado went to calgary and treated them like like they should be behind Miko uh, ran 
ran 10. Oh, wow. That's a lot of ran 10 in Miko Rantanen and get a 6 2 dub. They haven't lost the Colorado Avalanches. Colorado Avalanche haven't lost since they made all those trades. Again, Stan Kroenke demands championships. Vegas went to Seattle and won in overtime 5-4. to four. Seattle, for how bad, quote-unquote, they are, they've been in a lot of overtime games. They're, they are right there. The Rangers visited Carolina and got a one to nothing dub. The Panthers visited Dallas. That's a top-seed matchup. The Stars are number one seed, I believe, in the Central, and Florida is number one lead in the Atlantic. So that's a top east-west seed sort of deal. Panthers come out on top four to three. Matthew Kachuk, he is the man for Florida uh, in that game. Pittsburgh visited Ottawa, and Ottawa got a 2-1 win in overtime. San Jose visited Philadelphia. Philadelphia, 3-2 win there. On Wednesday, the Kings visited the Blues. Blues got the better of the Kings, 3-1. Predators visited the Winnipeg Jets and got the better of them, 4-2. Edmonton hosted Washington and got a 7-2 win. Edmonton's hot the second half. Colorado went up to Vancouver, and Colorado in overtime behind Miko Rantanen again gets it done, 4-2-3. So, the standings. As we are enter the season with probably less than 30 days left, I honestly don't know when the playoffs start. I should look into that. But here I sit. The Panthers in the Eastern Conference Atlantic, it goes Panthers, Bruins, Maple Leafs, 94, 91, 82, respectively. In the Metropolitan, Rangers, Hurricanes, Flyers, 90, 84, 76, respectively. Colorado Avalanche. Five-game winning streak. I'm telling you, all those trades work. They made the right move. Seven, two, and one. Avalanche, Stars, Jets, 89, 89, 87. In the Pacific, Canucks, Oilers, Kings, and then Knights are tied with the Kings, 92, 83, 77. So the wild card teams looks like as follows. In the East, the Lightning lead the way with 72 points. The Islanders are, ha- I'm sorry. Lightning have 74, Islanders have 72, along with the Red Wings also at 72, and the Capitals sit at uh, 69. However, the Red Wings have lost six straight games and are four and six in their last 10. In the West, the Predators lead the way, the first wild card, two wild cards team make it. For those of you that don't know, I had to look it up. 80 points there. The Vegas Golden Knights have 77, and then a six-point gap. From the Knights to the Blues and the Minnesota Wild, both at 71 points. The Kraken sit at 68, so they've fallen off the pace quite a bit. Thank you, everyone, for being here. That was your last rendition of the 10-Minute Sports Report for this week. I hope you all enjoy it. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. Comment down below. I haven't done a comment in a while. Let's go Bills because I am in the AFC championship game in a stunning, exciting game in the divisional rounds. I took on the eight and nine Tennessee Titans and with three seconds left in the game, I CJ Stroud hooks up in the corner of the end zone with Devontae Smith for the go ahead touchdown after the 15 and two Buffalo Bills let the nine, eight and nine Tennessee Titans score with 35 seconds left to grab the lead, but not to worry because CJ Stroud is ya boy. So let's go, Bills. Down below, I take on the Chargers in the AFC title game with a spot on the line to face Roberto in the Super Bowl. Until next time, everyone. No God loves you. May God bless you. Wash your hands, you filthy animals, and peace out.